Thank you so much for inviting me again. I'm very happy to be here. The first Muslim scholar in Chinese language was Wang Dayu, who published a real commentary on the first atonement to teachings in 1642. In 40 chapters, this book offers an overview of basic Islamic notions about God, the universe, the human soul, the role of the prophets in salvation, and the practices that Muslims should perform. One of Wanda's major sources was a famous special work, Misa Ibad, Minal Marta El Al Ma'ad, The Past of the Servant from the Origin to the Return. This was written by Sheikh Najmuddin Razi, who died in 1256. A few years after Wang Dayu published his book in 1670, another Chinese Muslim scholar translated Razi's book into Chinese, and it became probably the single most influential text on Islam in Chinese over the next 200 years. Razi's book is marvelous in presentation of the whole range of Islamic teachings in Korea and Persian, and it became a standard text for all sorts of Muslims throughout the Persianate world. It includes sophisticated discussions on creation, the human microcosm, and the various degrees of human perfection. But it avoids the philosophical and theological terminology that typifies the writings of everywhere. The book shows no apparent awareness in Nairobi's teachings, even though we know that Nairobi flourished at the time when these teachings were spreading rapidly. In short, if we accept the notion of oneness of being Wahdat al Wujud was one of the characteristic teachings of the Nairobi school of thought, we should not expect to find references to it, either in Nairobi's ministry or in the writings of one life. Historically, it seems fairly clear that the first Sufi teachers to claim that Ibn Arabi and his followers upheld the doctrine of Bahad al was a great poet and scholar, Abdul Rahman Jami, who died in 1492. It is true that Ibn Arabi and his early followers, such as Sadrin Konami, often discussed both Bahad, oneness or unity, and Wujud being our existence. <coughs> However, it was Ibn Taymiyyah who died in 1928, writing 100 years after Ibn Arabi, who began to criticize him and others for believing in Bahdad al Before that time, none of Ibn Arabi's followers had employed this expression to characterize their teacher's position. Jeremy, however, was happy to claim that Ibn Arabi spoke for the oneness of being. And Jami's enormous influential writings were probably the single most important factor placing this doctrine at the center of Ibn Arabi's school of thought. When we look at the situation in China, we see that the second most important Muslim author translated in Chinese after Razi was in fact Jami. In the late 17th century, shortly after the period of Chinese translation of Misabeba, Another Chinese scholar published a translation of Jeremy's commentary on Fahdori, <coughs> Iraqi's Ramad. Iraqi wrote this classic poetical Persian prose after attending Sadri Kodari's lectures on the philosophic account of Ibn Arabi. Jeremy called his commentary on the flashes Ashia to Ramad, the rays of the flashes, and he based it mainly on the teachings of Konabi and his students. <coughs> such as Sadari About 40 years after the translation of the word Rays of the Fascists into Chinese, another Chinese scholar, Yu Chi, translated Jami's well-known novel, The Glimpse, which can be considered one of the best and most concise explanation of the doctrine of the oneness of being in the Persian language. Even, but even before he translated to the Maya, Liu Qi had borrowed copiously from Jami in some of his other writings. In fact, it is in the early writings of Liu Qi that we can find <coughs> one of the clearest expressions of Ahdadu Wujud in Chinese. 
Yuji is one of the two or three most influential Muslim authors in the Chinese language. He is most famous for what has been called the Tianfan Trilogy. Tianfan in Chinese means heavenly square, heavenly direction, and it was used to designate Mecca, Arabia, and the religion of Islam. The Tianfan Trilogy presents the Islamic religion in three volumes, published between 1704 and 1724. The title of each the volume begins with the word Tianfan, which you can translate as Islam. The three are called Nature and Principle in Islam, Rules and Prose, Proprieties in Islam, and the True Record of Atmos Sage of Islam. The first book focuses on Islamic theological teachings about God, the universe, and the human beings. The second addresses the rituals and the practices that Muslims need to perform in order to bring themselves into conformity with heaven. The third depicts the life of the prophet as the supreme sage, the one, the one who perfectly embodied the teachings and the practices of Islam. The first of these three books is called Tien Fan Shin, which means nature and principle in Islam. The book talks about being and its oneness in a manner that is clearly drawn from the writings of Jami. It consists of six parts, the first of which is called the root classic. Classic is a Chinese term for scripture and Muslims commonly refer to the Quran as a classic. Here, Luchi is using the word more loosely to refer to important Muslim books in Arabic and Persian. He explains in his interaction that the root classic is composed of a series of quotations from 16 found books. And in the text itself, he provides 86 marginal notes indicating the sources of each quote. The six books that he employs in the root classic include Rajiz and Isabevad, and the two works by Jeremy already mentioned, Lamaye and the commentary on the Lamaat. The remaining three books are Maksa de Aksa, a well-known Persian work by the 13th century Kriyami Sheikh, Aziz Nasafi, and Mawawif, a Mawawif fi Kalam, a famous Arabic text of theology by Azuddin Iji, and the Arabic Quran commentary on Ayyavi. In short, the six parts of nature and principal Islamic consist of free translations of many passages drawn from their six books and arranged in five short chapters. The remaining five chapters of the book analyze the topics of the five chapters in detail with the help of diagrams. Altogether, Luchi offers 70 diagrams.